Welcome, I'm Seth and in this video I'm going to be building this walnut and cherry fireplace mantle. So what I have here are some components to the end of the mantle. These are the outside pieces that are going to be visible on the outside and then these are the center dividers. And as you can see the color match between the two isn't very good. That's because I'm building this project basically from the leftovers of some lumber I had uh, making the set of bookcases. So not a big deal because these center dividers, the, the only part of these dividers that's actually going to be visible is the very front edge. So what I've done is I've uh, I've gone and cut a couple of smaller pieces from the same board these outside pieces came from and I'm just going to glue them onto the front of my two dividers and then from the front they'll have a perfect color match. Okay, so now that I've got all my boards milled, the next step is to lay out the joinery. And I'm going to start with the joinery that's in the center dividers. These are going to be sliding dovetails. I've got my subtop and my bottom together in the clamps. And the reason I have that is so that I can make sure that they are perfectly aligned, and stay perfectly aligned so that I can make all of my marks match. And I won't have to worry about one being a little bit off because with sliding dovetails, it's gonna be a tight fit, and if one of them's just a little bit skewed, then I'm gonna end up with issues. I'm gonna be marking this with center lines. Now I've got my center line marked, and I wanna make sure that I'm staying dead straight on that, so what I've done is I've gone and put a straight edge on either side. I did both sides because I'm going to be coming in two different directions. On this board, I'm going to be coming from here. And on this board, I'm going to be coming from that side. And the router is going to want to push. It, moving forward, it's going to want to push to the left. So when I switch to this side, it's going to want to push against this side just because of the, the rotation of the bit. I'm going to be using a fixed base router so that I don't have to worry about it coming unlocked or moving the height adjustment or any of that. I'll just set it. And on the bottom of this base, there's a center line marked and I've already centered the router plate to the router when this is mounted in so I can I know that that line is accurate and I've basically just set that line right on the center line that I marked 
and then I've locked in my straight edges. So I know that also having a round base, I can turn this in any way and it's gonna stay dead center on my mark. I'll have to reset this up for the other cut, but that's okay, I'd rather take my time and go slow and make sure that everything stays straight. All right, so I've got the dovetails cut and I've got it dry assembled. And I've got a couple more things to do here. Um, number one is my sides. They were rough cut oversized, knowing that my final dimension was gonna be dictated by these dividers and the sliding dovetails. So now that I've got that done, I can cut my final dimension uh, on the sides. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in to right where those dividers are and I'm just gonna mark on one of my pieces what that dimension is, and then I'll trim them both to the same size. I also need to trim the length or depth of these dividers as well. This is gonna be mounted on the wall with a French cleat. That French cleat is gonna get mounted in the back, so I have to cut them back um, by the thickness of this French cleat. So I'm just gonna set my depth on a square here and take this apart, mark them, trim the sides, trim these, and then I can get my joinery on the sides taken care of. Okay, so I've got the mantle dry assembled in terms of the sliding dovetails and the center dividers. Now I just have to worry about the joinery on the two sides and that I'm gonna keep pretty simple. I'm just gonna do it with a couple of biscuits, top and bottom, and then same with the French cleat in the back. I'm gonna put a couple of biscuits just for alignment to keep everything where it needs to be. And then just about ready to get everything glued up.
Okay, so I've got the carcass of the mantle put together and it's time to move on to the drawers. What I've got in front of me are my two, I think, best choices for drawer fronts. And I just laid out the, the possibilities based on the size of the drawer of what I could get out of these. What I'm going for is continuous grain across the front of those drawer fronts, but also I want to keep the grain pretty clean. So I was looking at this one down here and I can get my three drawer fronts and still avoid these knots and have what would still be a pretty continuous grain pattern because of the way that the grain kind of swirls around this knot over here anyway. If I cut that out and put these two together, it's going to look just like there wasn't a piece missing. And same over here. So I think I'm good if I use this. I would just have one small knot over on the side that I would need to fill with epoxy. And I compared that to this board up here where I have no knots, no voids, nothing that I would need to worry about. But what I do have is some blue staining from some nails. There's some cases where I think that that could look pretty cool. And I think I'm gonna save this board for those cases because in this case, with such a small drawer front, I really don't want to go and make this any busier with something like this blue stain that completely changes it, especially when I'm already matching the, these cherry drawer fronts up with the walnut mantle. And the two other pieces that I'm matching this mantle to don't have any really crazy grain on the cherry pieces that's visible. So I'm thinking I'm going to go with this one here. I, I think the grain pattern works out just right. And I'm going to save this board for something else where I can highlight that blue staining instead of trying to hide it or work around it. So I know I've mentioned before that um, I kind of buy locally, buy my lumber locally from local Sawyers, and it's a mix of wood. Some of it's really good, some of it's not so good. Well, <laughs> take a look at this piece. By all measures, this is a, a horrible piece of wood that I wouldn't normally choose for a piece of furniture. Except, I think it's actually gonna work perfect for what I'm doing right now. I try and work these pieces into those areas of a project that aren't very visible or can look different and it's not a big deal. Well, this piece right here is extremely sun faded. Probably will look different once I get it cleaned up. Um, probably will look a lot better actually um, once I get it cleaned up. But right now it kind of looks like junk um, and it's got a, a big bow to it. So I'm gonna actually use these for the drawer sides for a couple reasons. Number one, I can cut this down shorter and then I won't have to worry about the bow. Um, I'm gonna mill it down to just half an inch, so that gives me a lot of material to also work through to get it down to, to flatness and to the condition that I want. And then also on top of that, it's drawer sides, so 
it's okay if they're lighter. My other option would have been to go get some maple anyway and have some bright white, basically, drawer sides. Well, this, if it comes out and it's darker and looks more like the walnut, that'll look fine with that cherry drawer front. If it turns out that it's, it's just this faded when I get down to cleaner wood, that's also fine. It, it'll look good either way. So good way to, to make use of an otherwise horrible piece of wood.
Okay, so there you have it. I'm really happy with how this came out. After it's all said and done, the match to the bookcases, I, I think is exactly what I was looking for. I got just the, the look that I was going for. It's got matching hardware and of course, cherry and walnut as well. And now that it's actually here and hung up and next to those bookcases, it really looks like a match set and that's what I was going for. And so I'm really happy. I love the size, I love the proportions. I'd gone back and forth originally on the number of drawers I wanted to put in and exactly how I wanted to break this up and what would be the right size for a couple of drawers. So I'm really happy I settled with these three that I have here. All in all, I am absolutely thrilled with this. I love it. This is a fun project. It was a quick project. I had to make do with the leftover, I wouldn't call them scraps, but the leftover wood that I had available to me. And I think I, I managed to, to do well for what I had a, a couple of the pieces weren't that great when I started off with, but you know, I, I hid that part of it where I had to. The subtop in the back has a little bit that isn't pristine, but you don't see it. All you ever see is this front edge of that subtop. Uh, the color match I'm happy with. I really like how this one came out. I hope you enjoyed watching. I know this was a little bit of a longer video than most of them, but I didn't see a need to break this up into multiple videos. I wanted to get it all into one. So hopefully you enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks.